Hey guys, welcome to my first drive video on the Porsche Cayman GTS 4 litre. For those of you that have followed me for a while, you know that I have a real soft spot for the Porsche Cayman, especially the 981 GT4. It still ranks as one of my top three favourite ever cars. When the 718 Cayman was released about four years ago, I was disappointed that Porsche downsized the engines and gone from their wonderful flat sixes down to a boxer four pot. Yes, they produced more torque and probably actually were more effective than the six cylinder units they replaced. But that sonorous sound is off of what a Cayman is to me. That six pot screaming just behind the back of my shoulders. Then they announced and released the 718 GT4 back in 2019. And it was great to see that that had a four litre flat six back in it albeit cluttered up with OPF filters and stuff and maybe not sounding quite as good as the original GT4. But that car was still out of many people's price ranges and let's face it, buying a Porsche GT car is not as easy as going into a showroom and putting a deposit down. You have to be on that special list or have a good relationship with your dealer to get into a GT car. So although the current GT4 is a lovely bit of kit, it is fairly unattainable for most people, even if you can afford it. But then Porsche decided to stick that four litre in the GTS. Now, I actually drove a 718 GTS, but the 2.5 litre four pot at Goodwood about two years ago. Massively impressed with it. The dynamics were amazing. It just felt exactly like I remember the GT4 feeling. But one thing that was missing was that soundtrack. That four litre has been slightly detuned for the GTS, down 20 horsepower to 400. The torque figure is the same at 420 newton meters. That's not a massive torque figure when you compare it to the S55 in my M2 competition that produces 550 newton meters. This car also happens to be a six speed manual. Happy days. What's it like in the cabin? Well, it's really, really nice. Don't expect anything too modern in here. Everything in here is for a purpose. It's not like a 992 where everything is ultra modern and lots of touchscreen going on. This is fairly old school Porsche to me. And in fact, it doesn't actually feel that much further on from the 981 GT4. The PCM, this screen here looks a bit updated, but everything else looks very familiar. Stunning wheel that is just so nice to hold and why don't BMW learn? Look how nice and thin that is. Why do they make the rim of the steering wheel thin? So you can get some steering feel. I mean, it's not rocket science, is it? But what a wheel, really, really nice to look at and to hold. Not too many buttons on here, but I'm sure that you can option buttons all over the place. In fact, talking about options, well, it's a Porsche, so obviously you can go absolutely insane with the options. These base price are about £65,000 here in the UK. And this particular press car is 75 grand. So it has about £10,000 worth of options on it. We'll look at them in just a second. Looking around the rest of the cabin, well, as we talked about, it's a manual six speed. And what a fantastic feeling manual box. I've only driven this car for about 20 minutes. I've literally just picked it up from Porsche Reading. There's just something about a Porsche's driving position. You just sit nice and low and everything comes up to meet you. The steering wheel and the gear knob are so close together. It's like a minimal distance. So when you change gear, you're just taking your hand off for such a short period of time. You always know where it is. It's really, really easy. Pedal placement's fantastic. I haven't tried heel and toe yet, but I will a bit later. We've got a drive mode down here. Um, that goes between sort of your comfort, your sport, your sport plus, and you can have an individual mode down there as well. But that's it. There's no cluttering around here. It's just lovely. This has got a sports chrono pack. So I've got the stopwatch up there on the dashboard. Again, a real trademark Porsche signature dashboard look, if you like, if you've got the sport chrono pack. In terms of the rest of the options that this car's got fitted, well, I'll just get my phone out and we'll have a look. Although Porsche are fairly renowned for their extensive options list, with this particular model, the Cayman GTS 4 litre, there's no stopping you just buying one of these as a stock car, maybe adding one or two options, because let's face it, you're buying this car for driving dynamics and that four litre engine, and they come standard, as do a lot of the things in this car. But let's just go through some of the options that don't come standard. So the Python green paintwork, stunning. 
but that's close to 1700 pounds you don't have to have it but it does look special gts interior package in crayon the gts comes with a few bits of alcantara and a couple of bits of trim that sort of separate it from let's say the cayman s but if you go for the gts interior pack then you get things like the gts and the headrests you get the contrasting crayon stitching you get a lot more alcantara throughout the cabin so it just feels a bit more special and the gts interior pack uh, all together is about three thousand pounds so again it's up to you whether you want your car to feel a bit more special you've got lovely alcantara headlining in here as well black high gloss window trims 300 quid they contrast well with the python green led main headlights including the porsche dynamic light system plus so essentially adaptive headlights these particular light units are 1400 quid and they do look a lot better than the standard or regular lights although someone like nick murray who's one of my favorite Porsche YouTubers, he always likes the more simple and basic light design. Electric folding exterior mirrors, £210. They should really be standard on a 65 grand Cayman. We've also got automatic dimming interior and exterior mirrors, £345. Again, should be standard. Park assist front and rear, £623. Speed limit indicator, £236. Cruise control, again, something that should be standard on this fairly high-end Cayman. Uh, that's £228. Two-zone climate control, £539. Isofix child seat mounting points on the passenger seat, 126 quid, And the Bose sound system, £834. I guess that's reasonably priced, actually. So all of those options together come to pretty much £10,000 on the nose. And I think that's about your average GTS. I mean, most Porsche customers will spend around that. But like I said, there's no need to if you're just buying this as a tool to go out for a drive because you're gonna get this wheel, you're gonna get this gear knob, you're gonna get that four litre, and you're gonna get these wheels and this look, maybe not in this color. So maybe keep the options cheap and just enjoy this car for what it is. Let's put this away and get this car out on the road. Talking of storage, actually, it's reasonably good in here. We've got Porsche's amazing cup holders that they've taken away in the 992 generation of the 911. We've got a boot at the back, which is okay. And we've got Porsche's frunk, I guess you'd call it, at the front, which is actually reasonably big. And I remember with the 981 again, when I did that road trip, I had no issues storing all of my camera gear and luggage. So for the size of the car, because this is a small car, especially by today's standards, it's actually fairly practical. Let's fire it up. Just put the uh, exhaust button on down here. Oh. In fact, let's bring it around to Sport Plus. Now it's relatively warm, so don't have a go at me for revving it, but uh, let's just give it a little blip, just for your sake, obviously, not for mine, because that would be childish. Listen to that, and the way the rev counter just swings up, it's just instant response. The throttle pedal is just to die for. Even the weighting in the pedal itself, just, unbelievable and that's what Porsche do they just build amazing drivers cars oh wow let's put my crayon seat belt on and get out of here anything in my head I really just wanted to 
experience this with you guys for the first time and talk to you about what I'm feeling. The last time I was behind the wheel of a Cayman was a 718 GTS, that 2.5 litre four cylinder at Goodwood, and it was brilliant, but it missed something. It missed this. As talked about earlier on, the driving position is brilliant. I feel like I could be sitting a bit lower and the carbon buckets probably give you that extra inch or so, but I just can't complain. I love the way I'm surrounded by everything. And actually, although this is a small car with a small amount of glass around me, visibility wise, well, it's brilliant. I can see everywhere. There's no blind spots, if you like. Even the rear vision through that slanted boot is just brilliant. I can see so much out of there. It's a really easy car to live with. We've talked about the practicalities of the two boots and reasonable amount of storage inside the cabin. But in terms of yeah, visibility, blind spots, etc., it's just brilliant. I'm in Sport Plus at the moment, which is the most aggressive setting you can have the car. I'm actually going to turn the dampers off so it softens the ride, and it's a very, very good ride quality in here. You wouldn't know you're on 20 inch wheels with very low profile tyres. It just seems to iron out everything. It's really, really nice and fluid. This particular road is not horrendous, but I have been down here in cars where <laughs> you get your fillings rattled loose. And in this car, even though it is a reasonably focused sports car, the ride quality is just brilliant. And this gearbox, well, the action is amazing. The first negative I have to talk about, and it's something that everyone bangs on about, including me, in the original 981 GT4, is although the action of this gearbox is to die for, it's only really good when you're out on track or in another country, maybe going a little bit above the speed limit, because here in the UK, second gear is apparently good for almost 90 miles an hour. So if you want to ring it out in second, third, fourth, I mean, you, you work it out for yourself, you're going to be doing silly, silly speed. So that's my only reservation, I think, from my initial drive is the fact that I wish that they sorted the gear ratios out a little bit. Second gear coming through here. I mean, second's great, but that's 60, which is the speed limit. So <laughs> we're, only, we're only about two thirds of the way up the rev range. So it's very difficult to actually utilize and use all of the gears. And obviously because it's normally aspirated, you kind of need to get up in the rev range to discover that 400 horsepower because there's not much torque or power down low. But saying that, it's a fairly light car. I think it's about 1,450 kilos. And so even though it lacks torque, it's not as heavy as say my M2 competition. And let's put it into sixth gear, even in sixth gear at 2000 RPM, you put your foot down and you can feel it pushing on, which is a really nice welcome surprise. Let's just give you a first to second gear crescendo. Here we go. really 
nice controllable manner. The whole car moves, really balanced movement. Even on Cup 2s, that 981 used to move around in a really nice way. You knew where the limits were, you could push it over the limits, but it wouldn't snap, it wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't spin around, it would just start moving further <laughs> across the tarmac. It was a lovely balanced feel and nothing I've driven since has ever felt like that and this car although as I say I haven't driven it hard enough it definitely feels like it has those traits and oh, I would love to get one of these out on a track because I think you could just have so much fun <laughs> guys I hope you've enjoyed this first drive video I'm planning on shooting a proper video on this, weather pending of course, I've got it for a few days, so keep an eye out for that one. Thanks a lot for the support this year. Please give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, leave any comments and questions below. Until the next one, I'll see you then.